Now, my next guest is Cinzia DeSantis. Uh, she was a biologist and now full-time writer before moving to Milton under Witchwood. She lived most of her life in Venezuela, where she also spent her teenage years performing as an actor on the amateur and professional circuits. Her debut novel in English is called The Sense of Darkness, and uh, Cinzia joins me now. Lovely to see you. Welcome to the show, Cynthia. Thank you, Kat. Is, is there an English equivalent to Cynthia? Yes, it's Cynthia. Oh, yeah, not mm. too very much far away from no. uh, Cynthia, is it, Cynthia? <laughs> so what's it like? Can I call you Cynthia? Yeah, of course. Yeah. What's it like growing up in, in such a breathtakingly beautiful country but with a painful sting in its tail? It, when I um, uh, when I was growing up in Venezuela, the situation was not as dramatic mm. as it is now. And growing up there means falling in love with the country. It's uh, beautiful, it's stunningly beautiful. We have all sort of um, different environments, like from the snow in the uh, in the Andes mm. to the most spectacular coral reefs, uh, archipelags, the Amazon, the Orinoco Delta, the savannas. Whatever you turn around in Venezuela, you find this um, overwhelming beauty. So you had a charmed childhood, really? Yes. What was, it, what was your childhood like then? Tell me about your parents. Tell me about where you lived in Venezuela. Well, I actually, I was born in Italy from Italian parents. And therefore, that's the name. The name is actually an Italian name. It's Cinzia in Italian. But I moved to Venezuela when I was three months old. Mm. Therefore, my heart and, um, you know, my home is really Venezuela. Uh, I moved, I lived a little bit kind of sort of a ghetto because um, a lot of Italians moved to Venezuela when uh, after the war and and they remained in some sort of, in a sort of capsule, uh, an Italian capsule. But actually, it's really when I start studying uh, biology mm. and especially marine biology that I discovered the beauty and the powerful uh, magic that this country has. Um, and uh, you, know, you cannot get out of your system, really. Mm. What's changed, though? Clearly, I mean, a lot has changed. I mean, you said when you grew up in Venezuela, yeah. the, the picture wasn't as bad. As it indeed is now. So, yeah. so what what is happening? What really is the picture now in Venezuela? The picture current the current picture in Venezuela is what I call a humanitarian crisis in slow motion. Last year we had twenty five thousand people murdered, um, and ninety two percent of those murders went unpunished. And I'm talking about a population of thirty million people. So mm. we had more more crimes, more murders than Europe and United States together. In one year, um, inflation is um, 56% last year, and this year is expected to be 70 or even 100%. Mm. Kidnap is, you know, common. Last week, for example, a friend of my daughter who is 20 years old was kidnapped, was taken from her bed, kidnap for ransom, and her father had been kidnapped two months ago. So. It's not only the street crime, but it's also the kidnap, the blackmails. It's um, it's really it's sort of a war zone. How does it make you feel? Because this is a country, like you said, that has your heart. It's your home. You grew up there. So how do you feel about what's happening over there? All the corruption, extortion, murder, kidnap. Well, I have mixed feelings. First of all, uh, I feel very blessed to be mm. able to live here. Absolutely. And at the same time, very sad to see what's going on in Venezuela. Um, it, this is um, it's not visible, really. What's really happening in Venezuela is not very visible. And you don't see it in the news as often as I think it should be. Uh, partly because there are so many dramatic you know, things going on in the rest of the world, like what's happening now in Iraq and in Syria. And, but uh, also because it's, you know, the other end of the of the ocean and Spanish speaking. But in reality, in Venezuela, uh, I think what's going on in Venezuela matters to mm. Europe because Venezuela is now the corridor of drug trafficking from Bolivia and Peru um, to United States and Europe. So mm. basically, is the way through the, the drug, uh, you know, um, is shipped um, overseas. And also there are evidences that in Venezuela there are some terrorist uh, cells like Hezbollah and uh, ETA, the um, Spanish uh, Basque. So there are some evidence that's happening in Venezuela. So a country that is run by a world, it can become a country run by warlords or even drug lords. Mm. 
So um, I think that it should be more evident what's going on mm. and, and people should understand a little bit better what's happening because it can become a problem for the rest of, of uh, the West. Do you still have family and friends out there yeah. in Venezuela? I do, yeah. And what do they say about the current situation? They are desperate. Uh, most of them would like to leave the country. Um, some of them are living. I mean, the diaspora, the Venezuelan diaspora is around a million people uh, all over all over the world, really. And uh, mostly people, uh, young professionals, very competent, very capable. So mm -hmm. there is a brain drain, uh, quite dramatic. Uh, but it seems there are no options. There is no way out of what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's getting worse by the hour. I, I know there's a real strength of community in Venezuela as well. And uh, in fact, the, 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 the courage and the strength mm. of, in fact, the Latin American women yes. out there is, is, is second to none, is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. It's not uncommon in Latin America to see women who are head of family. They are mothers mm. and fathers, full-time workers. They take care of the old people, their parents. They are very resourceful. Um, very strong and, and, you know, in all sort of, in all walks of life. And therefore, uh, you can see, well, in, uh, currently we have four uh, women president in Latin America. Um, four? Four, yes. Laura Chinchilla in uh, Costa Rica, Cristina Fernandez in mm. Argentina, Dima mm. Rousseff in Brazil, and uh, Bachelet, Michelle Bachelet in Chile. Mm. And uh, partly the reason is because um, uh, the the politics and politicians are so discredited, are so corrupted, and women are perceived as more honest and more decent. Therefore, they are as they are perceived as more capable to lead these changes, the social and political changes that are currently going on in Latin America. Mm. And what I like about uh, Latin American politicians, um, uh, female politicians, is that they are they haven't lost their gender. They haven't become honorary men to lead their countries. They have, they're still in touch with their soft side and they are feminine and caring. And that's, I think, is quite unique uh, mm. in the world. How difficult is it to make people care about the situation? Because that was your home. Venezuela yeah. is where your heart yes. is. Yeah. You now, you know, now you live in Milton under Witchwood, but, but, but how do you make people care about the situation there, which sounds horrific? At the beginning, I had a very, these very ambitious targets that was to talk to two people every day mm. about what was going on. That, of course, became unmanageable. But um, every time I have the opportunity to talk about what's happening in Venezuela um, to uh, to current people, to you know, taxi drivers or my colleagues uh, at work, I do it. And of course, it's kind of a, a little bit like a, a lonely, a lonely, a very lonely task. Uh, there is not a, a very well articulated opposition movement in, in Venezuela. So, but I keep trying, you mm. know, and individually many people are trying to do a lot uh, all over the world to raise awareness about what's going on. Mm. Well, uh, we're going to talk about your interesting career. We're going to talk about uh, your acting as a teenager when, of course, you were in Venezuela. We'll also talk about uh, your career as a biologist and then, of course, uh, your, 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 your debut novel in English, which is called uh, The Sense of Darkness. So we'll hear more about that. My guest in the studio is... Uh, Cynthia DeSantis. She lives in Milton under Witchwood and she is now a full-time author. It's BBC Radio Oxford and I'm joined in the studio by my guest this afternoon. She's called Cynthia DeSantis. Uh, she was born and raised in Venezuela. Well, she wasn't born there. She uh, went over to Venezuela when she was just a few months old as a baby. So um, that is her home. She's now living as a full-time author in Milton under Witchwood. Um, but Cynthia, you haven't always been an author, so you mentioned your career as a biologist. That's sort of mm. how it all started. Was your chosen career anything to do with the fact that you grew up, you were raised in one of the most beautiful countries in the world and you wanted to protect that country? Yeah. Absolutely, yes. You're spot on, Kat, because um, to me, um, just to go to the sea and admire this diversity, this the beauty, the colours, the smell... Uh, you really get to the point where you want to take care of it. Mm. And, and so for me, a way to take care of it was to study uh, marine biology. You mentioned the smell. What does Venezuela smell like? It's very different. It's fruity and it's, it's warm and, um, and wonderful. <laughs> Oh, you've taken me there. You have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you, I mean, a, a biologist that, that then goes into 
acting on the the amateur and professional circuit. You've yeah. had quite quite a CV there, <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> Well, I really actually started uh, my first, um, let's say, career, let's put it that way, although it wasn't a career, but I started acting when I was 11. Mm. I was very shy. And I thought that the way to, uh, you know, overcome my shyness was through acting. And I actually loved it. Mm. So I continued acting um, into my late 20s. And then I became a storyteller. And I had to, I wanted to write my own stories. So I started in that way. Books have always been in my family. My fa- my father was an avid book reader. My mother worked with a Nobel Prize winner, uh, Gabriela Mistral. Uh, so I um, lived and I grew up in an environment of book lovers. Mm. And did they read to you when you were a child, when you were a baby? Yeah, yes. What sort of stories did they read to you? Were they sort of Venezuelan classics? No, they weren't Venezuelan classic. And actually there are beautiful Venezuelan uh, stories, indigenous stories, mm. um, origin myth uh, stories. But no, it was more, uh, it was more, you know, t- type of Italian sort of stories. Uh, but also, you know. The, the the very very warming mm. stories as a as a child. Cynthia, I would imagine that when you were living and growing up in Venezuela, you'd never even heard of a place called Oxfordshire, <laughs> let alone know that one day you'd actually be living here in Milton under Witchwood. Yes, you're right. <laughs> yes, sometimes I ask myself, you know, how come? But the truth is that I. Uh, I was um, working for a Venezuelan company, then recruited by a British company in Venezuela. Mm. And 11 years ago, they offered me a job um, overseas. The situation was starting to degrade already, and I had a young daughter. So I said, well, I I thought it was better for her to be raised uh, in a safe place like England. And then I was lucky enough to marry a very nice uh, Brit who uh, lives in Milton under Witchwood and um, I retired from my career and now this is now I'm a full-time author. Mm, well, uh, we'll talk about the book, uh, The Sense of Darkness, in just a couple of moments' time. Of course, as I mentioned before, that is uh, your debut novel mm. in English. But first, we must do this. Cat Orman on digital 95.2 FM and online. BBC Radio Oxford. Radio for Oxfordshire. And my guest in the studio, you're hearing from Cynthia DeSantis. Uh, she was, well, she grew up in Venezuela. She now lives in Milton under Witchwood. What was that transition, Cynthia, actually a little bit unsettling? You know, when I mean, you said that you fell in love with a Brit, you married him, of course, and he just happened to live in Milton under Witchwood. But but quite a different life, really, coming from <laughs> Venezuela to Milton under Witchwood, albeit a very beautiful place. <laughs> yes, indeed, it was. Um, at the beginning, it was extremely difficult uh, to settle down. Um, everything was different, mm. the weather, um, the food, the smells, the, the, the landscape. Uh, and also I had the responsibility of um, to raise my daughter. Uh, it was also particularly difficult because three weeks after I arrived to England, I discovered I had cancer, colon cancer, and probably with metastasis in the liver. So at that point in time, I said, well, I cannot live without, you know, I cannot leave this world without saying the things that I want to say. And therefore, at that moment, I start, is when I started to take really seriously Uh, writing again. So the first years were quite dark, let's put it that way. Uh, But then I um, I found, as I say, this uh, very nice bridge and my life has completely turned around. Mm. So you never thought when you had that diagnosis of colon cancer, you never thought, well, actually, I'm I'm going to go back to my friends, my family in Venezuela and and, and be, be there with them. Well, apparently, if the, the, the diagnosis of the liver, the liver cancer was, was true, was uh, positive, I wouldn't have enough time to do it. Mm. So um, I said, well, um, I basically need to put my things, um, you know, to... to How did you come through that? Uh, like to, be fa- to be faced with the, mm. the end of your life, potentially. It's, well, you have very strange reactions. My first reaction was to call, at the time I was married to a Venezuelan who came here with me. And I called my best friends and I say, look, this is what's happening to me. You need to marry him because he's incapable <laughs> of raising my daughter. So, you know, these are the strange things that you mm-hmm. think when you're faced with. A... So I tried to put my things you know, straight. I didn't say anything to my fa- family because I didn't want to upset them. I, and I really didn't know what to do. And then, you know, I was... Uh, 
I was determined to leave because uh, my daughter was too young and I didn't want to leave her alone and mm. have things to do. So it was very difficult, but now it's completely transformed and I'm very, very uh, lucky. And you got over all that and you're absolutely fine now. Yeah, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. It's a very happy ending, isn't it? Very now happy uh, ending, you're, yeah. you're writing full time now as well. Yeah. Does, does Milton under which would inspire your writing? Uh, the memory of my country inspired my writing, but I definitely found a lot of peace and uh, space to write in Milton under which would, um, especially during the weekends for me, it was the ideal time to 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 write the novel. So it's a place that helped me a lot. Uh, to undertake this uh, this career, this right? Project. Well, the the English, uh, well, the, your your English debut, The Sense of Darkness, certainly your first novel in English, The Sense mm-hmm. of Darkness. Um, can you just summarise that for us? What's it about? You mentioned Clara. I know that's the the, the main character. Yeah, um, The Sense of, of Darkness is a love story set in a beautiful, but at the same time violent region in Latin America. Uh, the main characters are very powerful women. Uh, who whose lives are intertwined with the violence and also have to overcome their own personal circumstances. The heroine of the story is Clara. Mm. Clara is a blind girl. Uh, she's very vivacious. She's uh, very resourceful. She uh, is curious, a little bit mischievous, adventurous. And she is gifted with this incredible sense of smell that allows her to know where people and things are so she can move around easily. And also she can smell the disease uh, in people, Mm -hmm. in a person, and then in the exuberant forest that surrounds her, she can smell the cure. She finds natural remedy. So Clara becomes this very renowned healer, uh, and people from all from the region come to see her, until one day uh, a guerrilla gang bursts into her uh, home with a badly wounded prisoner. And tell her to, she has to cure him, or or if not, she will die. They will kill her. In the process of smelling this young man, she perceives a scent that she has never perceived before, and which provokes in her these feelings um, unknown and this um, turmoil inside of her that she doesn't understand what's happening. As the young man uh, gets better, he falls in love with this almost magical being, but the gorilla will come back soon to take him. Mm. So this tension, um, Clara wanted to save him, and uh, you know, knowing that the gorilla is coming back soon, it sets the scene for the next stages of the story. Mm. Uh, oh, it sounds like a lovely love story. Um, you mentioned Clara overcoming difficulties. Mm. Were there, you've overcome difficulties, so and many of them. So were there elements of, of you within Clara? In this, in that sense, yes, uh, and also the healing, the part of healing. The novel started in a very, it was a very political at the beginning. It was my way to channel my sadness for what was going on in my country. But then the characters really take their own life, and um, it became softer and became nicer. And uh, there is, a, and the, well, the the disease had a lot to do with that. The, mm. the healing process for me had a lot to do with the car- 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 Clara's character. As I say before, Latin American women are very resourceful and uh, very determined and brave. So Clara is the quintessence, I would say, of those characteristics. Mm. Well, uh, good luck uh, with a sense of darkness, Cynthia. It's been a pleasure to meet you. It really has. And let's mm. hope um, that indeed that uh, that's of course the debut English novel. But hopefully there'll be many more to follow as well. Thank you very much for Thank joining you very us. Much, Kat.